Today we're diving deep into the world of shooting in Aperture Priority or Aperture Mode. This semi-automatic mode has been a game changer for many photographers because it gives you direct control over your photos while still being easy to use. But why is Aperture Mode one of the most used settings for shooting photos? My name is Johannes and in case you don't know, I am a semi-professional photographer based in Copenhagen and I've been shooting in Aperture Mode for the past 10 years especially when I'm out shooting street photography. So why do I think that Aperture Mode is a really great mode to shoot in? Well, first of all, it is a powerful tool that lets you control the depth of field of your photo for you to use to enhance your storytelling. And then it's really easy to use once you set it up correctly. Because in Aperture Mode, you control the depth of field while you trust in your camera to set the appropriate shutter speed and ISO. But the caveat here is many cameras, when they come out from the factory, are set up in a way that can make it frustrating to shoot in Aperture Mode. So please make sure to stay around in this video because I will show you how you change the settings in your camera to make shooting in Aperture Mode a dream and make sure that you will never get a blurry photo again. So first of all, which aperture do you use when you're shooting in Aperture Mode? And I guess in general when you shoot street photos or photos. For me, I personally try to use an aperture around 2.8 to 5.6. But of course there are always exceptions for this. For instance, if I'm shooting in a very low lit scene or doing night photography. So I set the aperture to around 2.8 to 5.6 because I think this is where most lenses performs the best and where you get the, the best images out of your camera because you still get a enough shallow depth of field and creamy bokeh to, to get these uh, really nice looking photos that we all like. And on the other hand, the photos won't come up with a too blurry background that will take away the story of your photos. But yeah, as I said, if I shoot at nighttime or if I want the background to be more blurry, to have more out of focus elements, I can always bump down the uh, aperture to get a more blurry background. And for these instances, I will go down to a low as 1.8, which is the lowest that my lenses can go. On the other hand, if I'm outside in a very harsh and bright light, I might need to bump up the aperture a bit to compensate for all the uh, light going into the camera or if I don't want the background to be too blurry to have too many out of focus elements then I will also bump up the aperture and yes sometimes you want the background to be more in focus this is just a myth that you always want your background to be completely out of focus but of course this varies but just keep in mind that there might be something of interest in the background to enhance the story of your photo so we set the aperture to around 2.8 but now what do we do because as i said this also means that your camera will choose the shutter speed that it finds appropriate and this is often a reason for photos to come out blurry because if the camera sets a shutter speed too low this will introduce motion blur into the photo and most of the times we don't want this and it can ruin your photo if you don't like it but what if I tell you that there is a setting in almost every camera brand that will tell your camera that when I'm shooting in aperture mode I never want you to go below this shutter speed so for instance you can tell the camera I don't want you to go below 1 200th of a second or 1 500th of a second and the camera will try never to go under this uh, shutter speed which will result in sharp photos when you are out on the street shooting fast moving objects as well. So this might have a different name depending on the brand of your camera but for Sony cameras these are called ISO ASS and I believe this stands for ISO automatic shutter speed. So just to put it simple if you use auto ISO and you change this value to let's say 1 500th of a second then your camera will always try to keep your shutter speed at 1 500th of a second. But in cases where the scene is completely dark, at least for Sony cameras, the camera will override these settings to try to give you a usable image. I don't know if other brands do this, but this is just something to keep in mind. So this is really fine, but what if you don't want to use an ISO, let's say ISO 500,000, what do you do? Well, there is also a setting for us to set in the camera to correct this, so the camera will not go and use these uh, very high numbers of ISO. For instance, on my Sony A7 III, if I go into auto ISO 
I can tell the camera that this is the minimum ISO that I want you to use. And I usually keep this at 100 because this is the base ISO of the camera. And I tell it for the highest ISO I want you to use, you should never go above 12,800. And this is just the limit that I found where the Sony a7 III starts to lose so much quality that I don't like to use the images anymore. For my a6000, for instance, I have put the minimum ISO to 100 and the highest ISO to 3000. 200 because this is a APC sensor camera that does not perform as well as the a7 III when it comes to shooting in low light. But combined now where we tell the camera to never use a shutter speed below 1 500th of a second and also to stay in this ISO range, we now have so much more control over how the camera performs when we shoot in aperture mode. So how to use this? Like for the auto ISO, I also have some standard rules that I go by when I'm setting the shutter speed. So for normal day time photos, I usually set the camera to 1 250th of a second because I found this to be fast enough to capture most situations. Also, my Sony 7.3 has IPAS and this of course also helps to stabilize and take away any blurriness of a photo. But if I use a longer focal length like the 70 to 200 millimeter, I actually bump it to 1 500th of a second because there is a general rule that say that your shutter speed should always be the double of the focal length of your camera, which in this case would be one four hundredth of a second, but this is not an option. But this uh, yeah, general rule is just to help you to get sharp photos when you use lenses. So this is good to, to keep in mind. And also if you want to freeze like a bicycle or fast moving car, then you might need to have a faster shutter speed. So again, one five hundredth of a second or perhaps even one thousand or one two thousand of a second. This is something that you need to practice and use to see what works for you. On the other way around, if I'm shooting in a low light scene, you might want to have a slower shutter speed to let in more light. And again, you need to, to try to take some test photos to see what is the lowest shutter speed that you can use while handhelding a camera and still get sharp photos. So we have set the aperture and we have put in the settings for the auto ISO and the auto shutter speed. And many times this is enough when you shoot in aperture mode, but sometimes the camera might be off when it's trying to set the exposure and how do you deal with this? Because this is where the exposure dial can come in handy. Although the exposure dial is not meant for creative control over how your photos look, I still think this is uh, useful to use in a creative situation because basically what the exposure dial does is you tell the camera that you have set the exposure like this, but I want you to go down a stop or two stops, or I want you to go up a stop or two stops with the settings that you have set right now. This can help you make the shot a bit brighter or a bit darker if you need it to be. La, 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 la. Just keep in mind that when you change the exposure dial, this will affect the shutter speed that the camera is using because this is the only control that it really has to, to change. So there are no clear rules on how you should use the exposure dial, but yeah, I usually keep it at zero. And where I usually use it is if I'm out in a bright day, then I will use it to either save the highlights if these are clipping, or I will use this to light up some shadows if I need to. Another way to control the exposure is also by using different exposure modes. And again, these may vary according to the brand of your camera but all cameras come with the same kinds of exposure mode usually. So multimetering will try to look at the whole image and then it would do some sort of mathematical calculation on how it thinks the photo should use. And this is not an average because it will like identify if there's a bright area as a sky and then it will try to compensate for this when it's uh, setting the exposure. And I use multimetering like eight or nine times out of 10. So yeah, this is the most standard meter mode that I use. Then we also have center weight, which as it's says it will take the exposure from the center of the camera. So this can be useful if you have a scene where there's a big contrast between the foreground and the background with a very bright area and a very dark area. So for instance, if you are inside and you want to shoot out of a window and it's darker inside and lighter outside, if you use multimeter mode, it will most of the time blow out the outside because it's trying to exposure for the inside. But if you want it to expose for the outside, then center weight would be a way to go because this will do the opposite taking that the window is in the center of the frame because it will try to set the exposure for the outside leaving the outside well exposed and the inside a bit darker so actually i rarely use this because i've had so actually i rarely use this because i have a workaround for 
this when you are shooting in multimetering mode. And basically I just have a custom button that I use to lock the exposure. So if I want to control the area from where the camera sets the exposure, I will point the camera at this area. I will press the button and lock the exposure. And when I move the camera around, the exposure is locked to this area. So I could, let's say, point the camera at a bright area press the button and then it will set the exposure for the bright area and I can then composite my frame and take the photo with this exposure set. And at least for Sony cameras, you can get this function as a toggle button and as a hold button. And I usually have this as a toggle button, so it will keep the exposure until I press it again. And the great about this is that you can still use the exposure dial as we talked about earlier to compensate. So if the camera did not put the exact exposure that I wanted, I can use the exposure dial to dial the exposure in just the way I want it and then take the photo. And if you're a Sony user as me, Sony cameras actually also come with an exposure setting that will meter for the highlights. I have actually never really used this, but this can be a useful setting because yeah, it will help you save the highlights when you're out doing uh, street photography. And this might be a way to not deal with trying to compensate the exposure by using the exposure wheel, for instance. There you have it. These are my tricks for using aperture mode, especially when I'm out shooting street photography. Before we wrap up, let's just quickly recap what I've said in this video. We began by understanding that aperture mode is not just a setting, it is also a storyteller's best friend. The control it gives you over the depth of field is really a useful tool for you to leave out or leave in certain objects in a frame that can enhance the story of your photo. Setting the aperture to around 2.8 to 5.6 is usually the sweet spot for getting great looking images. And of course we explored that there are exceptions to this, for instance when you shoot nighttime where you might want to go lower or when you're outside and you want to ensure that every photo remains sharp, we harness the power of auto ISO and minimum shutter speed. By customizing the auto ISO settings and the minimum shutter speed, we can control exactly how the camera sets the setting so we never miss a shot again, making the aperture priority an even more powerful tool than when it comes out of the camera. The exposure dial can become your greatest friend if you want to control the exposure when you're using aperture mode because this gives you the ability to control how the highlights and the shadows look in your shot. We also covered the different exposure modes for another way to control these settings. So in conclusion, mastering the aperture mode isn't just about mastering technical settings. It is also about honing your craft and trying to tell great stories from your images. If you don't use aperture mode now, I hope you have found some interest in going out and trying this out. And if you use aperture mode, I hope you perhaps learned something new about how you can make this even better. And as always, if you found this video valuable in any way, please make sure to leave a like and also subscribe to the channel. It really helps a lot and I really appreciate every each one of you that decides to subscribe to, to my channel. Until next time, happy shooting in aperture mode and I will see you around in the next video. Bye!